Today I'm going to teach you how to position yourself as a mid laner in League of Legends. And to learn how to do that, we first need to clarify that mid positioning is entirely dependent on the type of champion that you're playing and the pace of the game you're in. The mid position is played with a mage or with an assassin. Of course you can play with any type of champion in this position, but for this to work you have to have a good strategy and a good team that has experience with your initial middle lane pick, so we'll stick to mages and assassins and let the coaches and professional gamers have the unusual middle lane picks for now. Firstly, we need to understand the strengths and weaknesses of mages and assassins to be able to position as perfectly as we can. Mages do a whole lot of AoE damage, they are having the highest skills range, they can wipe out clean marksmen, fighters and even the other enemy mages. And as for their weaknesses, they lack mobility, they are very vulnerable to assassins and if they get caught in a stun or a slow, they die pretty fast if not instantly. And so, bad positioning for mages is never an option because it's never forgiving. On the other hand, assassins have the highest burst damage in the game against one target, their mobility helps them plan a swift kill or a grand escape if in danger, and as for their weaknesses, they are kind of vulnerable to crowd control like slows and stuns, they don't have a huge life pool, and they are weak against tanks and fighters. Now let's dive down a bit. We'll see now how mages and assassins position themselves in the game stages. I'm talking about the landing, mid and late phases. And we are going to talk about mages first. Because we've established already that mages lack mobility and that they are vulnerable to crowd controls, we have to play our mage with this in mind. For mages, in the entire game we have to position perfectly to apply the deadly AoE crowd controlling damage. For an easy understanding, we are going to take as an example of a great positioning our mage here locks. She's in the landing phase and she's keeping the distance between herself and Irelia, who is a deadly assassin. One of the default rules of mages is to keep their distance from literally everything, respect it to quickly become a powerful mage on the ladder. And another default rule for mages in the landing phase is to pay attention to these four locations if you're playing the blue side and these four if you're playing on the red side. The reason for that is that you can get ganked at any given minute. When the match reaches the mid and late game phases, the mages will safely distance on an invisible line that is parallel to the line formed by the closest and the farthest enemy's positions. For the correct positioning, the mage locks here can only move on this invisible parallel line because being parallel to the line that is formed by the closest and farthest enemy will keep her safe from dying and allows her to do AoE damage and also crowd controlling the enemy. Rewatch this as many times as needed until you understand. For mages, it's vital. And as an example, if Echo is not present and you have just one enemy in front of you, the Irelia here, your parallel lines transform into this and your movement should only be on this line. Now let's move on the assassin position. Assassins, on the other hand, want to break that parallel mentioned earlier on the mage's positioning. They want to be able to get close to their one victim to apply their burst damage and get out safely. And again we are going to take examples and as an example we are going to take here the assassin Akri. The game just started and she is in the landing phase. She is above level 6 and that adds a lot of mobility when hunting the enemies and more importantly survives after diving into a dangerous situation. She is constantly looking for an opportunity to position herself in such a way that will break the parallel that is keeping Lux safe by using her charm E. Lux gets too close to the wall and now she can only move in one direction. Akri knows, takes advantage of that and charms E her perfectly and makes her play. As for the mid and late game phases, we are going to be in Akri's shoes again and have her as an example of how an assassin is looking to position during these phases. Take this situation, it's minute 14 and Akri recalls in this bush but right before doing so, she leaves a war here, which is a trap set for the enemy, any enemy that passes. She needs that trap to have visibility when she comes back to lane to take a perfect position and land her abilities correctly because remember, we've talked earlier that all an assassin wants when the game speeds up in the mid and late game phases is to break that parallel that is keeping the enemies alive. By the time Akri comes back, Lux might come close to the ward set by Akri to put her own ward or just walking near that edge to go for a gank or anything that crosses her mind and fall into the trap set by her assassin opponent Akri in a matter of seconds. Assassins tend to hide their positions in the fog or bushes and if that's not possible they will always position behind the tanks and fighters 
And it's crucial to understand that because you must really be in a position to engage first when the team fights are about to happen. So remember, any wars placed by your teammates are essentially traps for the enemies, so use them wisely. As a reference, these are good trap warding locations when playing assassins. Screenshot it and save it. I hope you've learned something today and if I can help you with anything, let me know in the comments.